Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for taking the time to stop by. I do appreciate it. My home thoughts go back to Jorge Louis Borges, who's a fabulous writer. I must go back to his books again, Labyrinths and so many. And I like this best. You have not wakened. You have wakened not out of sleep, but into a prior dream. And that dream lies within another and so on to infinity, which is the number of grains of sand. The path that you are to take is endless, and you will, div you will die before you have truly awakened to it. And then I like this as well. A man sets out to draw the world. As the years go by, he peoples a space with images of provinces, kingdoms, mountains, bays, ships, islands, fishes, rooms, instruments, stars, horses, and individuals. A short time before he dies, he discovers that the patient labyrinth of lines traces the lineaments of his own face. I took this photograph of Dubai from the 62nd floor uh, of the Burj Khalifa. I was visiting there this weekend and uh, Paul has an apartment there and uh, tell me what you think of my photograph and it's actually a photograph of this main road and if you look back in the early 90s there was nothing there and then I was rather taken with this cloud at 35,000 feet as the sun set over Africa and I liked uh, this Banksy official tweet um, of an elephant holding flowers in its trunk. And one other item of home thoughts, a detail of Penelope Umbrico's sunset portraits from 11,827,282 flicker sunsets. Um, and it's pretty arresting. Final quote from the New Yorker from a story I was reading Clara didn't have much to say for herself, but she never got tired of saying it. Political Reflection Z meets Abe in Beijing in first China-Japan summit since 2012. It looks in this photograph from the BBC as if Z is holding his nose. China-US Gulf widens as marginalized Obama heads for Beijing summit. This is in The Guardian. We've seen indications that Xi Jinping has an ambition to increase China's influence in East Asia, Central Asia, and the Western Pacific. Many statements and actions imply that they will come at the cost of American predominance in the same regions, I think that this is already raising concerns in Washington. Chinese state-controlled media portrayed Obama as a lame duck after the midterm elections. The US public used to speak highly of Obama, but now many seem to have reversed their opinions. The nationalist tabloid Global Times wrote in an editorial last Wednesday. The newspaper added, with China's rise, we gradually have the ability to have a clear understanding of the US. The country is too lazy to reform. US society selected Obama, but there is no great American president in this era. So we've got an interesting situation at APEC and the body language is as seen in Xi Jinping's handshake give us a lot of clues, I feel. Um, as per the weekend, the Ebola death toll has risen to 4,950 out of 13,241 cases in the three worst hit countries. That was by November the 4th. And then I was reading an interview of Stephen Hawking, and he says, the danger is either by accident or design. We create a virus that destroys us. In the long term, I'm more worried about biology, he told the Telegraph. Nuclear weapons need large facilities, but genetic engineering can be done in a small lab. You can't regulate every lab in the world. The danger is that either by accident or design, 
We create a virus that destroys us. I don't think the human race will survive the next thousand years unless we spread into space. There are too many accidents that can befall life on a single planet. But I'm an optimist we will reach out to the stars. Gorbachev made some hard-hitting comments on the uh, 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. He said the world is on the brink of a new Cold War. Some are even saying that it's already begun. He made a lot of comments. Well worth reading the actual transcript of his comments. The 83-year-old former leader has accused the West, particularly the US, of triumphalism after the collapse of the communist bloc. I'll put up the Time magazine cover and just read what it says on that cover. And it is from September the 9th, 1985. And what's interesting for me is what I wrote on the 25th of August 2014, where I said, in, my, in fact, my view is that the new normal is a very arrhythmic world. Arrhythmia, uh, when plugged in into the computer, throws up for years. He'd been studying the phenomenon of chaos of which an arrhythmic heartbeat was a perfect example. I'll put up a chart of the Russian ruble and quote Timothy Ash of Standard Bank. People are in disbelief. The ruble is being smashed again. The central bank is nowhere. Look at that chart and you can see that President Obama and his people launched a sophisticated currency war on Russia or Blitzkrieg. An interesting piece in Global Research which talks about Russia's vulnerability to EU-US sanctions and military encroachments. The US-EU sponsored coup d'etat in the Ukraine and its conversion from a stable Russian trading partner to a devastated EU economic client and NATO launch pad as well as the subsequent economic sanctions against Russia for supporting the Russian ethnic majority in the Donbass region in Crimea, illustrate the dangerous vulnerability of the Russian economy and state. This is a very interesting article. Click on the link and have a read. The ongoing Western offensive against Russia is not a passing phase. It is the beginning of a prolonged, intensified economic political confrontation. I think it is. East German citizens, I like this photograph, climbed the Berlin Wall at the Brandenburg Gate after the opening of the East German border was announced. That was November 10th, 1989. And then I also like this photograph by Marion van R, photo extraordinaire at Boulevard Sant, Helmut Kohl devant la porte de Brandenburg see on the coal is in a wheelchair and you have the Brandenburg Gate in front of him and finally another photograph on this point a young girl places flowers at the memorial in Bernauerstrasse during a ceremony marking the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall that's from Reuters interesting statistics coming out uh, feelings about the Obama administration in percentage terms enthusiastic 11% Satisfied, 29%. Dissatisfied, 33%. Angry, 27%. And uh, if you then overlay that with the Republican side, it's coming up pretty similar in point of fact. I'll just take one quote out of an article about Erdogan and Kobani. It's Erdogan lashing out. He's under pressure. And the Kurds are gaining sympathy. He's angry. His style of leadership these days is taking revenge. Apparently, two security guards were killed by a man armed with a knife outside the Sudan's presidential palace in the capital Khartoum. Rather grand entrance, as you can see from the photograph via BBC. And, and uh, Z is dangling a $1.25 trillion as China counters US uh, refocus, speaking to executives at a CEO gathering in Beijing. Z outlined how much of the world's how much the world stands to gain from a rising China. He said outbound investment will total 1.25 trillion dollars over the next 10 years. 500 million Chinese tourists will go abroad. 
the government will spend $40 billion to revive the ancient Silk Road trade route between Asia and Europe. China's development will generate huge opportunities and benefits and hold lasting and infinite promise, he said. As China's overall national strength grows, China will be both capable and willing to provide more public goods for the Asia-Pacific and the world. Let me leave you with a photograph of John Kerry, the Iranian Foreign Minister, Javad Zarif, shaking hands as Omani Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs, Yusuf bin Alawi, and former EU Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton, watch in Muscat. This was on the 9th of November, which was also my birthday. The point about this is that Sultan Qaboos, who's now currently ill and abroad, was very much the interlocutor between Iran and the US. Currency markets, Euro 124.82, dollar index, a little bit off uh, Friday highs, 87.57, Japanese yen, 114.20. Um, it, it touched 115.59 on November 7th, which was the highest level since November 207 for the dollar, but the yen looks oversold. Swiss franc, 0.9643 pound, back at 159. Aussie 0.865, rose 0.4% on stronger Chinese data. India rupee 61.47, South Korean 110.84.50, snapped a seven day losing streak um, to uh, gain 0.6%. Uh, Real well above 250 at 255.93. Egyptian pound stronger at 709.90, but I'm not sure what it's been doing because it's been at 715 for a while. And the South African Rand 11.2080, US employers added 214,000 jobs in October, a little less than the median expectation, which was 235,000. The dollar has risen 1.7% in the past month, um, and is, that is the most amongst developed currencies. And the yen has declined 4.7%, the euro has added 0.4%. I'll put up a chart of the dollar index, and I think we might well see something close to 100 in 2015 on this index. Euro dollar 124.82, I think we're headed to 120 and then 1 in 2015. Interesting piece on Bloomberg about how high-speed ad traders profit by arbitraging your eyeballs. Arbitrage, as and I started my career on the trading floor by servicing a Japanese Nikkei 225 Japanese shares, arbitrage, very interesting it was too. Arbitrageurs are buying millions of online ads and reselling them for a profit in the blink of an eye. They're exploiting price discrepancies in a fast evolving marketplace where this year companies around the world will spend an estimated $9.33 billion on display and ad banner ads at auction. Here's how it works. Advertisers buy internet spots and ad exchanges where space is sold to the highest bidder. Even before ads reach the desired audience, they change hands in a complex volley of electronic trades between websites, ad space aggregators, exchanges, data analysts and ad agencies. That's where the arbitrages come in. Using their own programs, they ferret out underpriced ads and resell them. Interesting. Gold has picked up a little bit, 1174.025. I think it would be below a thousand in 2015. Crude oil bounced on Friday, $78.91, but I think this is a dead cat bounce, and I think we're going to see further selling pressure. <coughs> Prices slid for a seventh week on Brent through November the 7th, the longest run of decline since November 20, 2001. WTI Prices have lost 20% this year, and I continue to forecast that we're going to see lower prices. Coming to Africa, my weekend piece is called Ugadugu Signal to Sub-Saharan Africa. Africa Confidential magazine wrote that the President Bo of beautiful Blaise Kampaore departed with the help of French special forces who thoughtfully provided a helicopter to whisk the ousted leader from the presidential palace at Kaisan to an airstrip at Fada Nguma, eastern Burkina Faso. 
From there, another French aircraft flew him to the Ivorian capital, Yamoussoukro. Thousands of protesters had thronged the streets of Ugudugu and sacked buildings, including the parliament. A group of young activists themselves, calling themselves the Citizen's Broom, led by a rapper named Smocky, led the protest that culminated in the storming of parliament in a gesture similar to the fall of Saddam Hussein in 2003 or Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, beautiful Blaise Kampore's statue in Bobo Diolassu was also torn down. The tipping point for this accelerated sequence of events was President Kampore's stacking parliament in order to extend the presidential term limit. There are plenty of African presidents who are seeking to pull off the same magic trick, and events in Ugudugu have surely put them on notice. Martin Aglo, a law student from Benin, told Reuters after the Arab Spring, this is the Black Spring. During the Arab Spring, now in the bleak midwinter, nearly all commentators spoke of how this North African wildfire could not leap the Sahara and head to Sub-Saharan Africa. The reasons were that the state, i.e. incumbents, had a monopoly on the tools of violence and would bring overwhelming force and violence to bear. We need to ask ourselves, how many people can an incumbent shoot stone cold dead in such a situation? One hundred? A thousand? Ten thousand? This is another point. There is a threshold beyond which the incumbent cannot go. Where that threshold lies will be discovered in the throes of the event. Therefore, the preeminent point to note is that protests in Burkina Faso achieved escape velocity. Overthrowing incumbents is all about acceleration, momentum and speed, best characterized by the German word Blitzkrieg. Out of a population of 17 million people in Burkina Faso, over 60% are aged between 17 and 24 years, according to the World Bank. And this is another point to note. The country's youth flex their muscles. What's clear is that a very young, very informed and very connected African youth demographic, many characterize this as a demographic dividend, which for Beautiful Blaze turned into a demographic terminator, is set to alter the existing equilibrium between the rulers and the subjects, and a rebalancing has begun. Turning to the markets in Africa, the Nigerian Naira and the All Share Index have been ugudugud by the collapse in the price of oil. Some of the recent weakness in Nairobi has been a Nigerian infection. However, for now we're an oil importer and therefore the infection will ebb away. On the matter of oil, I noted an article in the Wall Street Journal which reported that India's ONGC Videsh is in deal talks with Tala Oil. According to the Wall Street Journal, Anil Bandari, ONGC's Director of Exploration, said his staff met Tala executives in London last week and they will continue their talks in coming days. Bandari said Tello executives told him that currently they are not interested in selling the company, but they are willing to sell assets. One has to extrapolate that Tello is looking to bail. There is plenty of noise around the capital gains tax component for the oil and gas sector in sub-Saharan Africa. These markets have moved big time. What look like bankable and sweet spot projects do not look so sweet now. Policy making needs to be cognizant of this because it is always better to tax a profit than to tax nothing at all. And then uh, I put in a link to the Wall Street Journal article, Tello's share price has fallen 46% this year and by more than two thirds since early 2012 and in part to falling oil prices, but also due to the company's lack of exploration success in recent times and challenges that they're facing in Africa. My conclusions are that informed chatter has been confirming that Tello are looking for an exit strategy. East Africa is of course home to more than 25% of natural gas discoveries made worldwide between 2010 and 2013, 
Stanislas Joshon, Director of Africa Oil and Gas at IHS Energy, said East Africa is the new hotspot. Interesting uh, research by Ernst & Young, Global Capital Confidence Barometer, and what they were saying was geopolitical issues are the biggest concern for 34% of African executives. South African all share is back above 50,000. It's up 8.26% year to date. Dollar versus Rand, I'll put up a six month chart. 11.207712 is my target for 2015. The Egyptian pound, a little bit firmer when I checked last 709.90. The Egyptian stock market, second best after Dar es Salaam this year in Africa, up 38.3204%. Let's get to Nigeria, where you will recall on the 27th of October, I wrote the lowest price in almost four years, I was referring to oil, is weighing big time on African oil producers such as Nigeria, where the Naira has been wobbling. The Nigerian oil share is now down 19.608% this year. This is February 2013 lows and fell 11.52% in just one week. That was last week. I'll also put up a chart of the Naira that Javier Blas kindly posted on Beyond Bricks. Um, we are seeing some panic selling from international institution holders, and that's putting a lot of pressure on domestic equities. That's exotics. 12 days of declines through Friday, longest losing streak since January 2009. The all share has fallen 23%. <clears throat> since this year's high on July 9. So it's a perfect storm and you've got the elections coming up and uh, I think you know everyone is just saying it's better to be out than in. Ghana Stock Exchange is up 3.8769% year to date. Um, interesting piece uh, I found uh, 118 million year old tracks of dinosaurs, mammals and crocodile found in Angola. According to paleontologists who presented their findings on Wednesday, the footprints of dinosaurs, 118 million years old, were located in a small sedimentary basin in the mine in the crater of one of the mine's kimberlite pipes. Coming to Kenya, um, there's been a, a, a number of there's been a situation in Mombasa. Firstly, gunmen killed a man suspected of terror attacks in Mombasa. I think that was on Friday sprayed bullets into his vehicle along the Membe Tayari Road in broad daylight. It's one of the main roads in Mombasa. Killed a man suspected of be being behind several attacks in Mombasa on Saturday. Hassan alias Guti Nasrallah was shot while driving a Honda saloon car. The car he was tra travelling in alongside his wife and niece had several bullet holes. Conflicting witness accounts have it that a car overtook them, stopped at a corner, its occupants shot Hassan. Others, however, said, police sh uh, said people shot him with black hoods on a motorbike. The suspect is alleged to have been involved in last year's killing at the Mombasa fire station and has a murder case in court about hacking a number of people. Human rights group Hacky Africa Executive Director Hussein Khalid said the killings of youth from the Jenga area was at an all-time high and currently stood 34. And I conclude by saying, you know, what's happening in Mombasa is now a coin strategy gone rogue. Um, and I think, you know, it has major implications. I'll put up a photograph of Mombasa Island that I took last year on Boxing Day. And then this, uh, at the funeral for this fellow, one person was dead after riots. Um, one person was killed in the Kenyan coastal city of Mombasa on Sunday after youths rioted to protest against the killing of an alleged um, Islamist militant. Police officially deny involvement in the killing, but sources within the force said Guti was slain by the elite anti-terrorism police unit. Um, it is becoming normal for people to be shot and killed in Mombasa, and nobody is ever arrested for this. What is wrong with our security agents? Um, if you are a radical Muslim, you are targeted by the government. If you are a moderate one, the radical Muslims will target you because they see you as a traitor. So what do we do? The Kenya shilling is just shy of 90 at 89.90. Nairobi all share popped 0.22% high on Friday. 
Um, it's up 16.706% uh, year to date. I think this cross infection out of Nigeria will now ebb. NAC20 is up 3.044% year to date, but it's 331 points below a September high. Interesting uh, a piece of video by ARM Cement, which has President Kikwete uh, commissioning the Tanga Clinker facility. And you know, that clinker facility will lead to a margin expansion worth $25 a ton. Um, and I'll put ARM's share price data at the bottom. Uh, once again, thank you for stopping by. It's good to be back from Dubai. It was my birthday on Sunday, and I thank my family for making it special. And uh, once again, I thank you for coming by. I am grateful.